everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for this base, basic cat jacket that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this basic cat jacket, you'll need some yarn. I've got this one here, which is this beautiful, soft... Um, it's an acrylic wool blend. I think it's about 90% acrylic, 10% wool, something like that. Beautiful soft in these grey, creamy colours here. It's going to work up really nicely into this, into this basic jacket. Um, you can choose any yarn that you like. This one here is, let's say it's about a four to five weight. Um, you know, you could make this out of cotton. You could make what, you know, you can have finer yarn, more chunky yarn. It all goes on the, the measurements by centimeter. So you don't need to, you know, match my yarn at all. You can choose whatever you like. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using five millimeters today. You'll need a darning needle to weave in and secure your ends. Some scissors to snip off excess from your ends. Uh, you'll need a button or a couple of buttons. I've got these two here, uh, two wooden ones. They're about 20 millimeters across. You can use one button, you, large button. You can use two, you can use three, you could use four smaller buttons. Um, you can guide you know what you can make the buttonholes however big you want them or small you want them to be so you're you know you can make a creative decision on the buttons I'm using like I said two 20 millimeter buttons and then you'll need a tape measure to take some measurements from your cat now the the two main measurements you'll need are a neck circumference and you'll need a circumference around the widest part of the belly so where you want this jacket to sit so it can sit um, directly behind the back legs, um, and so you'll take a measurement around the ribs. Or if you want it to move um, a little bit further back, um, down towards the, your cat's back, towards the tail, then you could make this longer, and you'd take a measurement of wherever is the widest part of your cat um, behind the back legs, um, considering where you want this to fall. So, um, yeah, that's all you'll need as far as materials. So let's move on to the techniques that you'll need. Okay, so the techniques you, that you'll need to know to make this basic jacket are how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to double crochet, how to uh, tie on your yarn. So there's a couple of places where we tie on. Um, you'll need to know how to sew on buttons and also if you want to there's an option to add a single crochet border which i haven't added to this particular one so if you want to you'll need to know how to single crochet and then just you know the basic things of weaving in your ends finishing off your project and also taking some measurements and sizing your project so definitely beginner friendly it's a really simple um jacket to make that um, if you're not you know you're not feeling confident to size a sweater this is actually a really good option it's um, you know super simple to make it's pretty easy to fit overall and you get this this very versatile jacket that you can make longer if you want to you can um, you know you can make it a summer sort of um, you know project where it's like a little tank top you can make a winter one like this which I've used a, a wool blend here which um, you know makes it a warmer layer so you know it's uh, it's very versatile you can if you want to you can add a single crochet border and if you, if you do that you could make different colors you could you know you could be really creative with this basic template so I hope you enjoy the tutorial to come and let's get started Okay, so to get started, just make a slip knot onto your hook. And we're actually going to start down at the back of the jacket. So we're starting um, at the widest part of where you want it to fall. So we're going to make a chain. However wide you need that to be, plus some overlap to allow for it to wrap and, and add your buttons. Okay, so I for Melba, her, her circumference around her ribs, which is the widest part of where I want this to fall, is around 36 centimeters. 
So I'm going to chain to that 36 centimeters and I'm going to add um, probably about 8 to 10 centimeters onto that to allow for the wrap and so I can um, add my buttons to secure it. So I'm going to go ahead and do, let's say, about 35 sorry 45 centimeter chain so you'll do to the length that you need and like I said just a reminder this is the part the back part and it's it's to correspond to the widest part of your cat's belly um, where you want it to fall to so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll meet you once I'm finished okay so I'll just check how much I've got there I think I'm pretty close to 45 centimeters right now yeah it's actually exactly 45 centimeters so then once you've got your foundation chain you'll chain two and we're going to start working so an extra two on your chain we're going to start working into um, into the main part now so row one you've got the choice you can work just into the into the chain from the front as kind of we normally do or you can flip over your chain and you can work into these third loops in the back here it's entirely up to you I prefer to work into these third loops um, just because it gives a kind of a a, a nicer finish at the end but it, it's not a big deal either way you can just work into your into the front of your chain if you prefer so yarn over we're just going to use double crochets for all of the main part of this of this jacket so pull through two pull through two so let's just run through that again yarn over insert your hook into that back loop or wherever wherever you're inserting it yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so you're just going to work your double crochets into each of those chains all the way along until you get to the end of the row and I'm going to work off off camera and I'll meet you once I get back to the end of my chain okay so I've just finished my first row there and then we're going to move on to row two so chaining two and turn then we're just going to work one single uh, sorry one double crochet into each of our stitches in the previous row so for this back part that's basically all we're going to do is to just work back and forth with rows of double crochet one in each stitch until we get to the height that we want now that will vary depending on so the number of rows I mean will vary depending on the yarn that you're using and also how um, how wide you want this part to be so um, for me I'm probably going to go to about 10 centimeters something like that so it might be another two or three rows for me um, it might be more for you and you might want your your jacket to be a little bit longer than I do so you could go for a, an extra row or two as well so you work out where you want your jacket to fall and just just bear in mind that there's no shaping to this jacket so um, you know you want it to obviously fit around the widest part but just bear in mind where the narrowest part is too and there's no there's no actual shaping to to this the bottom part of this jacket so how again how it will work is this part will wrap around underneath the belly and we'll have our our buttons so obviously there'll be an overlap we'll have buttonholes and then we'll sew the buttons on the other side so just to give you a bit of a, a context there so yeah just bear all those those little things in mind and keep working backwards and forwards until you have the the height that you want for this part that falls behind the back legs obviously on the back but um, behind the back legs so uh, yeah keep on going and I'll meet you once I'm at the height that I want okay I've just come back to you briefly um, at the end of my row two uh, just remember it depends on the yarn that you're using mine's very visible because of the thicker yarn that I'm using but if you're using a thinner uh, finer weight yarn you you might have a little bit of trouble finding that last stitch it can sometimes be sort of on the back side so sometimes you just need to turn it towards you to to see that last stitch there so just be careful not to skip that last one and then you're chaining two and turning and continuing on repeating row two 
like I said, until you find or you reach the height that you're, you're looking for for your jacket. So I'll continue on. You do the same and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I've done my belly band to the height that I want. And just to give you a, an idea of the height, it's about nine centimeters. So I think I'm going to stop there. I could go for another another row, but I, I'm I'm happy with that. I think that's going to be fine for me. If you want yours to be a bit longer, then definitely go ahead. And then I've already done this off camera, but you're just going to tie off here. So just yarn over and pull through, and snip off a tail end that you can weave it in later. Okay, so now we're going to move on to creating the central band area. Now, there's a few sizing decisions and creative decisions that you want to make here. Now, I've already gone ahead and, and checked this on Malibu. I've wrapped it around her belly. And I've just marked where I want the, um, the side of the side of the centerpiece, where I want it to fall on her, on her side. So you can make it a bit more narrow, or you could make it a little bit wider so there's more coverage around the sides of the body. So depending on what you're using it for, this basic jacket, you might want it to be um, a bit more fuller coverage, or you know, just quite thin, more like a harness type, type situation. So I've marked mine there, and so where I want it to fall, and I'll just fold that in half. And I'll count the number of stitches that that is from halfway. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So I'm going to go um, on this other side until this one here. So, yeah, well, I'm going to count 26. I don't need to mark it. So I should have mentioned before that a stitch marker is a good idea in this situation, but you know, you don't have to do it. You can you don't have to have one, you can just eyeball it. So anyway, this is where I'm going to tie on to. So just tie on. Actually, what I might do is leave my stitch marker there and actually count the 26 now and tie on at this point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 26. Okay, so I'm just going to tie on here. So I just tie on, put the um, yarn over my hook, pull through, and then I chain one. So that's just my basic tie on and because we're using double crochets I'm actually going to chain a second one. And then I'm going to work across to my stitch marker. So we're just we're just using double crochets and I'll, I'll work back into that place where I've tied on. I don't count my chain as a as a stitch. I just use it as a as a way to get a bit of height. And then oh, you can work in your tail as you move along. I'm going to do that because I like to have the least tails possible to weave in. So I'm just going to do double crochets all the way along to my stitch marker. So you would have worked out how long you want yours to be and how far you want it to sit down the side. And I'll just give you an idea on mine. It's about, about 21 centimeters across. So that means that it's going to sit about 10 centimeters either side. So let's just say... This is the middle of Melba's back here. It's going to sit about 10 centimeters that way, about 10 centimeters that way. So you continue on with what you're doing, and I'll finish across here, and then I'll show you how we're going to work each row from there on. So go ahead and finish that row, and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've reached my stitch marker there, and I'll just pull that, pull that out. And then I'm going to put that last stitch in there and then I'm going to show you what we'll do just to, what we're going to do is just very gently decrease this as we move towards the neck band so don't chain just turn and then we're going to skip that first stitch and place a double crochet into the second stitch so we're just decreasing by that one stitch at the beginning of each row and then from there, we just work one double crochet into each 
stitch until you get to the end of the row and then you'll just do the same so each row from here on out until you reach the height that you need to to get to your cat's neck the you know just the base of the neck then you'll just repeat this row here which is that don't chain just turn and then skip the first stitch and work your double crochet into the second stitch so I'm going to continue on and do that um, to the height that I need so just be careful when you work into the end of the row just just imagine that I'm coming back here just be careful that you don't skip that last stitch it sometimes can be a little bit folded forward so you might need to see it actually what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll show you just how to make sure that you catch that last stitch in the in the row so anyway work along to the end of this row and then start your second row and I'll meet you or your third row really I'll meet you at the end of that third row just to just to make sure that we don't miss that that stitch on the end there so here I am at this last stitch here so just yeah when it's facing you you'll, you'll see that there's it's kind of it's kind of sloping down so you might just have to turn that over a little and get your hook into there and work into that last stitch and then of course no chain turn and then double crochet in the second stitch so you keep going until you've reached the height that you need and you may need to take a measurement from your cat here so from the this area here from where the the, the belly band sits up to where you need it to be for your um, for your cat's neck to reach your cat's neck so uh, keep on going and I'll uh, I'll do the same and we'll see you shortly Okay, so I've done my centerpiece as high as I need it for Melba. And just to give you an idea of where mine's at, I'm at about 10 centimeters, about 10 centimeters high. So now we're going to move on and make the final part of this jacket, which is the neck band. And it's really, really simple. So you'll have a, a measurement of your cat's neck circumference to work with. So for Melba, hers is about 24 centimeters, 23 and a half, 24 centimeters. So I'm going to create a chain that will allow, so this is obviously going to be part of the neck band here. So I need to, let me see how wide that is. So that is about 15. So, and I want to make this about 25 in neck circumference so I can get it over her head and accommodate her her neck as well so just bear in mind that you'll need to be able to get this over the top of your cat's head if your cat has quite a wide head you might need to add a little bit extra uh, for Melba her you know she her proportions are domestic short hair proportions so I can add about a centimeter centimeter and a half maximum and, and I can fit that over her head and it still fits in her around your neck well so from this 15 I'm going to have to add 10 centimeters of of chain so I'll go ahead and do that let's see where we're at there so you add, you'll add the chain length that you feel you need for your cat and I'll just measure that yeah I might just that's 10 centimeters I'll just go let's say one one more and then we're going to attach it around to this other side so just be careful that you don't twist your twist your chain have I got mine twisted there I think I might have yeah there we go and then you're going to once <laughs> I get that untwisted and then you're going to slip stitch over to this other side just slip stitch into that first stitch there yarn over and pull through and then chain two and then we're just going to do around or two or three however many you want of once again double crochets one in each stitch in this area here which is stitches and then one in each chain um, as you move around the chain and then once you get back to here where well, you'll slip stitch and uh, chain two 
and then you'll do another round or two or three it's up to you how you you know you might want it so it folds over you might just want one round you might want a really thin neck band it's up to you um, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for at least two I might even go for three but I think with this yarn being quite chunky in my the height of my each of my rows being what it is I think I'm probably going to only going to go for two rows but we'll see I'll assess when I get there so you go ahead and you um, you know you create the height of the neckband that you want um, I'll I'll rejoin you just at the beginning of the next row just so we can work through that little bit together but it's really easy just slip stitch to join chain two and continue around okay so I've worked my way around and I'm just slip stitching to join and then just chaining two and I'm working back into that same stitch where the chain comes from because I'm not counting my chains as stitches in this piece so continue on however many rounds you want for your neck band as I said and if you want to make it wide and fold it over as I said before that's also an option so a little roll neck neck band that can also be cute so I'm going to go for at least one more round and I'll assess whether I'm going to go for a third and I'll meet you once we've all finished our neck band okay so I've done two rows there on the neck band and I'm going to leave it there now what you what you could do from here is you can do a row of single crochets around the border so you could do it around the neckline and then you could tie on and do it a down and around the rest of the jacket too so it'll depend on what yarn you're using for me I don't feel like it's going to look great if I do that border it's not really going to tidy it up because of this yarn that's got all the different colors through it but if you feel like you want to tidy up for example this edge here then you could add single crochet edges but we're going to do a single crochet um, down at least one side of this area here so um, you, you know it doesn't matter which side you do it but it's so you can add your buttonholes I'm gonna probably do it doesn't really matter too much I'll probably do it actually on this side here yeah so if you want to go ahead and do a single crochet border do go ahead and do that around the top of the neck there and if you want to do it on the rest of the the rest of the jacket too just tie on in one of these these areas here work your way down and now I'll skip forward and I'll meet you down here like I said I'm not adding a single crochet border in this yarn because I don't think it'll look uh, you know I don't think it'll tidy anything up I won't gain anything out of it for this yarn but if you wanted to you go ahead and do that you could even change color yarn if you wanted to and do it in a different color that would kind of look cool too um, I'm going to just skip that and I'm going to tie on down here where I'm going to make my buttonholes down this side so I'll I'll, uh, I'll see you down here I'm just going to yarn over and pull through actually before before I do that oops Let's just yeah yarn over pull through and those will get woven in all those ends at the end so I'm just gonna snip just snip that off and then yeah let's just go straight down here so I'm going to tie on here so just tie on as before just in the corner here so there's a few different ways that you can tie on I just do it in this really simple way just to just as I showed you before so we're just going to place single crochets and you'll have to work out here where you want your buttons to go so I'm going to use two buttons you might just have one and I'm going to work them right up in each corner here so I'm going to have my buttons kind of placed like that okay so I'm going to do just one single crochet first so you'll have to work out how many single crochets you need before you get to your first buttonhole and I'm actually going to start creating them right here so one two three and let's see if that's enough 
to get my button through let's just add my single crochet in there so you it, I advise you to test so you chain however many you need for your yarn size and your button size hook size and all those sort of factors so you might need to chain a different number to me but let me just see if I can get my button through with three chains yeah yeah that's going to be perfect yeah so I'm just going to move along so try and get your single crochets obviously there's no stitch to place them in but try and get them right in the center of either the stitch or the chain so just work them down you see if you if you get them in between you get this big kind of gaping hole and you might not mind but I prefer to try and get it right in the center of that chain there so it's not quite as much of a hole and then one at the top of the row one in the center of this stitch one at the top of the row so I'm just working down that edge so add however many buttonholes you need for the number of buttons you're you're adding in and place them where you want them to correspond to where you're going to sew on your button actually I need to start my chain here one two and three and then I'm just going to put a last single crochet down in this area here so I've got my two buttonholes one on each end and I'll just double check that that one second one will go through as well but I'm sure it will yep no problem so now unless you're continuing on with your single crochet border you'll just yarn over and pull through and otherwise continue on with your border and, and finish it off and then all that is left is sewing on your buttons and weaving in your your ends so oops still haven't got that throw at the top there don't know what's going on with this top one <laughs> I haven't seemed to manage to get it sorted anyway let's just pull that through yeah there we go and so now weave in your ends I'm, I'll show you one of those on camera and then I'll let you do all the rest of them on your own so I'm just going to take let's just take any old one let's just take this one and so just to weave in your ends I put put them into the back and with double crochets they're quite easy to weave into so weave along your stitches and because I've got grey yarn uh, sorry colored different colored yarn kind of graduated colors I'll go down towards the gray bit because I'm weaving in the gray a gray color here so I'll just go down the stitches and probably what you want to do for each one is you want to just be careful you don't pull it too tight you probably want to go down one direction I'm going to come across here you probably want to go down in one direction and then go back in the opposite direction just to you know make sure things are nice and secure just just make sure you don't go back under the same loop obviously that's that's going to unravel so I'll come over that loop and weave back through and you can go back again if you feel like you need to I'm just going to come down one of these one of these stitches there's, you know there's no set way to do this you just just weave it in so it's nice and secure and it's nice and neat there we go so I'll just snip off any excess and you go ahead and finish all your others off camera all your other tail ends weave those in and I will see you after I've done that and we'll talk about sewing on the buttons okay so we come to sewing on the buttons I've woven in all my ends there and so you'll need to take the measurement of your cat's rib circumference or wherever you, the widest part of your of your cat is which you've already done so now we're going to use that measurement to sew on our buttons okay so I know Melba's measurement is 36 so my buttons are going to be as far as the overlap goes about here 
So in line with that second stitch. So that's, that's going to be the overlap. Let me just double check that. And you know, if you've got your cat with you, it's always a good idea to check this actually on your cat. So I'm going to lay out, yeah, 30, yeah, 36, 37 is going to be just in that second stitch there. So I'm going to roll this over. Now, you can sew on your button however you want to sew on. You might need a needle that's thinner than your darning needle because it, it'll depend on how big your holes are for your button. But I'm going to use this one here. And I've lined up the, the button holes right in the center of these two rows here. So I'm going to sew this one on here. So just sew on your buttons, however you however you do that, you know, just simple simple sewing, and it'll depend on whether you've got double holes or am I going to be able to get that through? Hopefully, oh, oh no, it's stuck. It's actually stuck on there. Um, so double, it's either double holes or like me, you might have four holes. So you'll just sew on your button in the places your button slash buttons wherever they need to go. And just make sure they're nice and secure. And then you'll weave these ends. So once you've sewed on your button, you'll weave the ends into the back of your work again. So I'm going to continue on with sewing my button on here. So you do the same. Sew on your button or buttons. And I'll meet you once I've done, I've done mine. And we'll finish off together. Okay, so I've sewn on my buttons there. And... What uh, what I'll do now, just to make sure that they're nice and secure, what I tend to do is with the two the two um, ends of the where I was sewing on my button, I just tend to put a knot in those in the back, just to make sure that the buttons are nice and secure. Just a simple knot, and then we'll weave in these ends. And if I can fit both ends into the one eye of my needle. I'm going to do two at once, which I think I can. Here, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Anything to decrease the number of ends to weave in. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly finish that off. Otherwise, your, your basic jacket is done. So there's lots of applications for this jacket, you know, it can be a, a warm, uh, just a warm layer, it can be, you know, you can, it can be decorative, you've got lots of leeway with how you can create with this basic jacket. So um, I'll just finish this off and I'll meet you in a moment. Okay, so there's my finished jacket. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, I'd love, as usual, to see photos of your cat wearing his or her basic jacket. So please send those along to catventurers.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurers.crochet. So I really hope you've enjoyed it and we hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. You're getting so good at this these days. <laughs> Such a cute girl. And a cute jacket. Look how cute that is. Well done, Melba. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, baby. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, she's such a ham. Okay, you ready? Finished?